I'm recording and we're going to talk a bit about uh, publishing these days. We're going to talk about publishing and whoa, we're going to look at my face in large. Hey, Paul, how's it going? Good to see you. So um, one of the things that got us started out talking about publishing is this material that's been coming out lately from uh, authorearnings.com. Did you guys have a chance to look at that very much? No. Okay. So <laughs> the thing that really surprised me about the authorearnings.com is that I found some information that makes it really seem like when this website came on the scene in 2014, it kind of shook a lot of people's world because it was able to give a lot of information about what authors were actually making. Basically, this guy came up with software that was able to, um, well, what were they able to do? They were able to really look at what they, they were able to look at Amazon bestsellers rank, which everyone can look at all the time. And they were able to get a, a program to sort of aggregate all that data from a million different authors bestseller status on a day-to-day -day basis and correlate that with what we know about how many sales it gets to it takes to get into that bestseller status and so they were basically able to figure out how much authors are making on Amazon by by aggregating all this data and so since then uh, they've just finished all their collection of 2017 data since then they've really expanded what they can collect and so it's told people a lot about the the book industry the publishing industry and um, you know it seemed like it really shook a lot of people up in 2014 when they first started doing it I sort of missed that completely um, and I'm guessing that you guys did too. So I'm playing catch up here. And what I'm finding is that there's a ton of authors out there um, who are self-publishing, which is now called indie publishing, because you're doing it independently, as opposed to working with an independent publisher. You are an independent publisher. So you're now an indie publisher instead of a self-published author. And these people are doing it and looking at the data, some of the stuff that they see is, you'll have to excuse me because I am really not very good with colors and these pie charts and stuff get tend to get pretty, uh, pretty tight with the colors. So I'm not very good at identifying these things, but the best that I can tell, 35% is indie published, is that true? And so then big five, and this is the 2014 report. Big five published is which one, 28%? Is that true? Yep. And so this one, uncategorized single author publisher, this is basically, this is basically whoa. whoa. Connie, I'm gonna mute you because I'm getting a lot of feedback. Uh, so this is um, basically this 18% and this 35% are both, indie publishers. These are both self-published people. So 18 and 35% is 53%. So 53% of the titles in ebook genre bestseller lists and bestsellers are the top 100 and 1,000 bestsellers. Um, a lot of them are self-published folks. They're figuring this out and they're seeing you know, 28% is from the big five, 4% is from Amazon, which was surprising to me. I thought that they were doing better. One of the things that I've learned in all of this is that Amazon publishing is not doing as well as I had thought that they were. Um, they're really a much smaller element of the industry, but um, I don't know. There's a lot, basically this first report just showed that a huge amount of money is happening with self-published authors. A, a huge amount is going to self-published authors. So if we fast forward to make this quick, we'll look at the January report from 2018. This is uh, three quarters from 2017. 
um, and we'll just look at the charts. I would recommend reading some of this stuff. But um, so you've got ebook sales is a huge amount of money. Audio, so ebook sales is 1.3 billion. Audiobook sales is half a billion. And online print sales are three uh, billion. But the big thing about online print sales is that a huge amount of that is textbooks and nonfiction. So the fiction element of that is pretty low or is, you know, not as big as that three billion. Um, so online sales by format, uh, a huge number of ebooks are selling uh, and then um, print is second to that, but a lot of the dollars are coming in print. Um, what's interesting about this though, is that a huge amount of those dollars are coming in um, either textbooks or if they're coming in print, these are, um, if we're talking about big five published, these are the formats that authors are getting the least percentage of. So a typical percentage for authors of paperback sale is less than 10%. And usually it's less than 15% for hardcover. Um, so online sales by format. Um, this is right. So this is the whole industry. And then if you drill down to just fiction and nonfiction, uh, it's even more ebooks and more of the money is going to ebooks um, and less here when you take out that other stuff. Online sales by, so this is just fiction. So with just fiction, you have a huge amount of the sales are ebooks and much, uh, more than 50% of the money, retail dollar sales by format is in eBooks. Um, and this is interesting as we'll see, because, so yeah, this is sort of a monthly thing. You'll, you'll notice that typically we think of buying books or a big book release as coming either around Christmas or in the summer. For mysteries, we think about that a lot. But this is only happening in print. Like the print thing is big in the summer and around December or the fall. But ebooks is the same every month. There's really no change there. So if you're thinking about releasing an ebook, you can release it at any time um, and it doesn't matter. Uh, and then ebook sales by publisher type, this is where my uh, color blindness just totally falls apart and I won't even try to go down this road. But if we look at this, um, you've got the big, so for eBooks, the big five is doing a quarter of the units and bringing in 43% of the dollars. But keep in mind, with the big five, authors are really only getting 25% of that. With Indie self-published, so these two here are basically self-publishing here, uh, Indie and Indie. This comes to 35% or something like that more than the number of units that um, the big five are doing. And then 20% of the dollars, which is you know roughly half of that. But if you look at this number, 43%, and figure that authors are getting at most 25% of that, uh, here's 20%, but authors are getting 70% of that, up to 70%. Some indie authors are getting, um, depending on where you price it, uh, 35%, but in this range, most of the authors are getting 70%. So even though the overall dollars are lower, um, authors are doing well here and the cost of each book is lower, which is raising the number of units that sell. And again, it leads to money for authors. So where this all comes down to What these guys are, yeah, the, some of this stuff is hard to figure out. And then they get into audiobooks and things like that. Um, but if I were to give you the really boiled down version of these reports, it would tell you that um, 
there's a lot of money being made by self-publishing authors in the ebook marketplace. And the amount of money that traditional publishers are making for authors is really dwindling. Um, there's something along the lines in one of these that says the average salary of all the, if you take all the authors that are published by the big five and average out their salary, they're making, the average writer is making $9,000 a year. But this is only people who are published by the big five. I mean, what percent of people who are trying to publish with the big five actually get published? Like if you look at the pool of authors who are writing and then they go, they totally get whittled down at the agent stage and then they get whittled down at the editor stage, actually selling the book. It's really hard to get an agent. Uh, you know, maybe that 10% or 5% of authors get an agent. And then from there, you know, 20%, 30% of those authors get uh, a deal with an editor. So you're looking at absolutely the cream of the crop, the top 2% of authors that have been whittled down by the big five. And the average there is $9,000 a year. The flip side of it is you've got a much bigger pool on the self-publishing side. And some people are making a lot of money. A lot of people are making different amounts of money there. But it seems like what they're saying is it's easier to make some money, sort of medium level money, uh, going the indie publishing route and doing your own stuff. One of the things that I realized in all of this, uh, before I started doing this research on author earnings, is that they have all these tools now on Amazon. Part of the reason why I went with Thomas and Mercer was because they had the keys to the kingdom. They could do ads on Amazon. Uh, and I thought that that was really valuable. Ads on Kindle devices, ads on Amazon websites. And now, Basically, they've sold that off. We all know that we can do ads on Facebook, but what's happened now is that Amazon has sold the ability for anyone to put ads on Amazon web pages and Kindle devices. So there's four different kinds of ads that you can run, and you have to be self-published to run these. You can't run these on anything that's published by an author. And so there's four different kinds of ads that you can create. Um, I have a long video by some super smart eggheady guy about how to do these that I'm sort of watching and I can forward that to you guys if you're interested. But so there's sponsored product ads and then there's product display ads. Product or interest targeted ads can display on related product detail pages and Kindle readers. These are keyword targeted ads that display in search results and on product detail pages. So I've started monkeying around with this uh, using um, my short story collection, A Long Way From Disney, which is by any stretch, not exactly a marketable commodity. Um, you know, it's a short story collection, it's literary, the highest uh, money earning, um, self-publishing, indie publishing genres are mystery and crime, romance, and science fiction. Erotica is really big, but um, mystery and science fiction are really big. Uh, there's one of these. So these are the top 44 ebook sub-genres. Literature and fiction, mystery, thriller, and suspense, romance, and then science fiction. So mystery thriller is really big, and there's a ton of money that's getting made. Um, I don't know. In any case, literature and fiction, if you were to break out short stories from that, it would be pretty far down the totem pole. So I've been playing around with running these ads for my short story collection, and I'm very rudimentary in how I, how I understand how to do this. But you look at the impressions that I'm getting, like these are relatively a lot of people's screens that my book is showing up on. And these are the number of clicks, which isn't a ton, the people who write about this stuff a lot are talking about getting like a conversion rate of one to 10 for, um, for their clicks that they get. Like if you can get 10 people to click on your book page, you should be able to get um, one sale or like the worst numbers they talk about is uh, 
like 30 to one. Well, I've got, <laughs> this is like 200 clicks and zero sales. So clearly like the short story genre is not what these buy these authors, these buyers are, are shopping for. But what's interesting is I started playing with this stuff, I guess about a month ago, right at the end of January. And I just started to find out that it's leading to something. Something is starting to happen here. And no money is coming in yet, but there's some interesting data that's coming. So I sold one copy of a book, which was no big deal. But here's the thing that's interesting. There's this thing called Kindle Owners, or no, Kindle Unlimited. So the way that they pay you with Kindle Unlimited is they pay you by the pages of, of your book that people read. So somehow around the beginning of March, people started reading that collection. And so this day there was 14 pages. Then this day there was 50 pages, 30 pages, 35 pages, 78 pages, 56 pages. I don't know who these people are, but they're basically reading my short story collection on their Kindle. I don't know any information about it and it's not making me much money. I've made, today I made 25 cents on it. Historically, I've made $1.53 which is way less than the amount that I've spent on these ads, which is, you know, I don't know, $17, maybe $35. I don't know. I got free $50 from Amazon to start this whole business. So I don't think they've charged me yet. Um, but I'm not spending a lot of money and it's getting the short story collection on a lot of people's screens and actually getting them to click on it. You might have been following me on Facebook. I've been trying out a new uh, cover for my short story collection. So potentially when I get a new cover that pops a little bit more, that'll start to lead to more clicks and maybe even more purchases or more reads. I'm sort of trying to tweak all of this, but um, I definitely am going at it with one hand behind my back in that I'm working with the short stories which aren't the hottest commodity. And I only have two short story collections there that I can sell. But if I was really to ramp this up, I would put something in the back of the short story collection saying, you know, read the next collection. If you, if you liked a long way from Disney, go read Fisher cat. And then whoever starts reading Disney starts reading Fisher cat. All these things can start to ramp up. And this is how people are starting to make money. They're, they're getting in there with four or six or something different crime novels and they start directing people to read the first one and then it kind of picks up speed and then you know they're doing new releases they push their new releases um it seems like this is how people are making money in self-publishing now and it really got me thinking um i thought i was in big trouble because jack wakes up which is the first book in my jack palm series is at $9.99 for ebook because that's what Random House has it at because they published it. And nobody's gonna buy a $9.99 ebook. Um, you know, maybe for like Lee Child or a brand new bestseller, if I were able to run ads and get people to Jack Wakes Up, people wouldn't buy it for $9.99. I found out that I am eligible now to get the rights back for that. So I've started that procedure. And if I get the when I get the rights back, I can market whatever I want uh, in terms of ebook price and run ads for it myself and then use that to lead people to this is life, which I'm also getting the rights back. And then if I do the Maltese Jordans, which I'm planning to publish in the summer, I could have potentially two or four books in the series or three or four books in the series. I might break out this is life and checkmate again, which I did a, a along the way. Uh, and so it's, so I'm thinking about doing that. And so I would have Jack wakes up, this is life checkmate. And then the Maltese Jordans coming out this summer and I could run ads for all of them or for Jack wakes up and the Maltese Jordans and try to get people to those titles, hoping that they'll buy the other books in the series. And this is what I'm playing with. Um, it has me feeling like, there's a lot more potential in self-publishing at this point um, because it enables you to run those Amazon marketing ads uh, and you control the price, you control the 
um, the cover and the copy on the book landing page. A lot of these authors are writing really sort of internet savvy um, clickbait style information on their book landing pages instead of the standard like big block paragraphs of what this book is about that we're used to from old school publishing. Uh, and so they're having some more success with that. There's a lot of different things that you can play with, including the ads, the ad copy, the covers, the prices, all of these things you can play with. And um, it seems like there's quite an audience out there that's looking for this stuff. And people are not really interested in reading that much on your Amazon page about your book, but there's a lot of people with Kindles that are looking to buy up stuff or they have, they've subscribed to this Kindle unlimited and they can just find anything and just start reading it and you get paid per pages that they read. So if you get them to read through your whole book, you get paid for that whole thing and people are racking up money this way. So when I'm weighing and thinking about for you guys, uh, you know, the energy that goes into the process of trying to find a traditional publisher, dealing with agents, dealing with editors, going through the process of working with a publisher, developmental editing, copy editing, proofreading, galleys, marketing. I mean, you end up doing so much of the marketing and promotion on your own. It just feels like going directly to indie publishing, um, choosing your own cover designer and paying that person, choosing your own copy editor and proofreader um, and paying them, it seems like all of this seems to be a really smart way to go these days. And the big kicker is that regardless of what you ever get from, an, from someone in terms of an advance, you're looking to earn out by selling. And if you look at going with a big publisher, the best you're gonna get is 25% on the ebooks, you're going to get lower on print by a lot. And if you self publish yourself, you can control what you get on the print. I don't know about the percentages there, but you can get 80% of the ebooks. So if you can run the ads, and basically what these people are doing now is running ads and working it so that the cost of the ads is less than what they're getting back in sales. And then they just keep trying to run more and more ads and try to scale things up like that. And some people are having a lot of success with it. This one guy I've been talking to is named Brian Meeks. And he's written a couple of books about how authors are making money. <coughs> and he keeps sending me um, names of authors that I've never heard of. Mark Dawson, these other people who are making, selling huge amounts of books on Amazon. I've never even heard of them. And they're like, you know, your version of a household author, uh, but you've never heard of them because they're just self-publishing, but they're out there selling a huge number of books. There's this woman that he showed me uh, who writes vampire books, which I know none of us are eager to do, but she's like um, Stephanie Myers, the Twilight woman, except she's getting 70% instead of whatever Myers is getting. And apparently she's making upwards of 500,000 a month. Some people are making thousands a month. In any case, there's a lot here to explore. I'm looking into it further. Uh, I would encourage you to read some of those reports out of authorearnings.com. Um, it takes a little while, but I think they're worth it. There's also a lot of interesting comments uh, at the bottom of them from different people asking about um, you know, how the metrics how they came about with the data, asking questions about the metrics. Um, you know, there's just interesting stuff there and it's worth it to sit down for a little while. So check out those links that I sent, uh, see what you think. And um, I'll keep you posted on what I learn with uh, these advertising campaigns um, as I go forward with it. And particularly when I get some of the, um, the rights back for my, mystery fiction, the Jack Palm stuff. Um, some of the stuff that that um, Amazon put out, Thomas and Mercer, everyone pays and In Broad Daylight are still doing well enough that they're not technically out of print. But because Thomas and Mercer never did a, re a very good job with Young Junius or This Is Life, they're technically contractually out of print, 
which means that I can get the rights back and then I can do whatever I want with them. Same with Jack Wakes Up. And originally I was worried like, well, maybe it's more prestigious for me to have it out there with this publisher. And I talked to my agent about it and she said, you know, she, both of the agents that I talked to just said, you know, get those rights back. Whatever you sell, you'll make 70% instead of 25%. And then, you know, there's much more power for you to do. So as you guys continue to write, um, know that there is a fair amount of folks out there who are publishing and would say that there's a lot of good news in the publishing realm for authors. Uh, I just feel like we spend so much time, all of the people in our world spend so much time thinking about the traditional publishers or small market publishers. And, um, you know, it's really not the only game in town by any means. So there's a whole other world out there and there's a lot that you can do with it. When I think about the writers that I know on Facebook, so many of them are, are writing a lot of good books and then publishing with these tiny publishing houses that they basically know aren't going to sell any books for them or make them any money at all. And that's just been the model that I've been staring at for a long time. And so it's interesting to look at this uh, alternative and see that there's a lot of other stuff going on. Does that make sense? Any questions about that? Is that interesting? I've muted all of you, but if you have questions, I'd love to hear them. Oh, David's here. Hi, David. And Lynn is still in the car. Oh, my galoshes. Sorry, Lynn. So, Seth, when um, you're going to get your rights back eventually, and then you're going to, I mean, are you intending on trying to go the self-publishing route? Or yeah, I mean, that's the whole reason to get the rights back is to just keep those things released, but have them under my account instead of the publisher's account so that I can control. I mean, I know that if Jack Wakes Up is at $3.99 or $4.99, it's going to sell way better than if it's at $9.99. Nobody's going to buy that ebook for nine ninety nine. People just don't buy backlist ebooks for nine ninety nine. And you have no way of of through the big publisher that you have now, no way of getting them to drop that price point. No, and I I've been trying since the book came out, uh, but that they're just like this is how we do it. This is what we do. Blah blah blah. And so it's not selling, um, you know, and and anything that it does sell, I'm making. Um, you know, 25% on. So 25, so 250 for every $10 copy that it sells. If I can sell it for $5, I'm making 350, 70% of $5 is 350. So I'm actually doing a dollar better if I sell it for half the price. Why wouldn't I do that? And then I can run the ads for it and control the copy and do whatever else I want. So that's the reason to get the rights back is to put it out there and be able to do other things with it. But if I'm looking at it from the point of view of you guys, it seems like for a long time I've been sent, I, you know, the only game is to, and we've talked about it not being the only game, but, but I know a lot of people think about going the traditional route and getting a traditional publisher. Um, and it's just, you know, the payoff from that and the amount of work that you have to put into it is just like decreasing and the payoff is decreasing for the work put in. And But there's a real other options here as opposed to just feeling like you're self-publishing and throwing it out there to nothing or going with a small publisher and throwing it out to nothing. You have a lot of choices here and things that you can do or people that you can hire to help you do them. Any other questions about that? Thoughts? Points of interest? Give a shit? Yes. Okay, so bottom line is you believe that you can drive a boatload of interest in an independently published book through a set of Amazon ads. Is that, am I understanding that correctly? Because the issue is always how the hell do you drive the interest? How do you drive the buyer to the book? Right. I'm just checking. Well, 
Yeah. I So the thing that I like about this is that I have tools that I can use to do it. And in my experience of working with publishers, you just turn it all over to them and cross your fingers. And the number of times that they do a good job with that, Put it this way, I can't think of one writer that I could ask right now, are you happy with what your publisher has done for you? And they would say yes. Nobody that I know. I can't think of one. Everyone is out there breaking their butts to try to sell the book themselves. And, you know, they're trying to go to bookstores, they're planning readings, they're doing this, they're doing that. Maybe they're doing Facebook ads, they're doing blog tours. Nobody's going to any of this stuff. It's not pushing any units and so here's so something here's where you can actually sell copies you're making the alec baldwin trump face connie that's good what's a um, blog tour oh my god it's where you go on a whole bunch of other writers blogs and oh, okay you go you write a blog post for free for 12 other writers who are reading each other's blog posts and then get to read 12 of your blog posts and have no money to buy your book. But it really gets you some exposure. I, yeah, I mean, it's these things that people have been doing. Oh, I'll write a piece for Huffington Post. Maybe people will read that and then they'll buy my, you know, people, have, writers have been scrambling so hard for so long to try to find ways with social media or bookstores or anything to get people to see their book and buy their book. Um, when you get with the big publishers, they're not doing that work for you. I mean, we'd look at the big debut authors each year, the the top 1% who get like the golden handshake. And that's such a small number of authors who are being published by the big publishers, which is such a small number of authors who are writing and who are writing good books that it's just a lottery ticket. Um, you might as well just buy the lottery every day and it's much less work than writing the book and trying to get it out there to those folks. So, you know, the upside of this to me feels like you can write books and get them out there more easily. And if you're writing well and producing material regularly, there's something that you can do with it. And I don't know, you just keep throwing stuff at it and, and hope that the numbers start to aggregate up. I don't know what can happen with those numbers. I'm not saying that I know that it can drive, I mean, you know, spending $30 and having 100,000 people or 200 people click on a long way from Disney. I don't know, it's kind of interesting. It's interesting to know that someone is actually reading that book today, which never would have happened before I spent this $30 to make $1.50. Uh, but, you know, it's not by any means the biggest way that I've lost money by trying to promote my work. Uh, so, you know, there's so many things that, that writers are doing. There's some, is there something here that I like? I'm looking at something that I like. And if these people, if you ask them what to work on, they would say, you know, write a whole bunch of 60,000 word books that are good, pay 1500 for each one to get it done by a good copy editor and get a good cover and, and shove them out there and keep putting stuff into the market. I'm not dying to write anything to go down that route right now, but I'm happy to have some stuff coming into the chamber that I can shoot those shoot out with those missiles launchers. And, uh, you know, I'm excited about doing the Maltese Jordans this way. I want to put out the book this summer, uh, drive more folks to Patreon to try to fund the um, foundational stuff for that and um, then run these ads and see what I can do with it. So another way of describing it all is to say that I have found some new tools that are giving me some reason for optimism and by no means are they new, but for me and a lot of other writers who I look at and see in my social media world or world of friends, we're, we're not using this at all. And so it's kind of interesting to see it. And I know that I don't think you guys are looking at it at all or have any knowledge of this. And as you guys are starting to write more and write better, uh, it might be an alternative, an attractive alternative 
just slamming your head against the agent slash gatekeeper slash editor slash big publishing model. All right. Good. Ready for workshop? All right. I'm stopping the recording.